Hello, everybody. I am Cassidy Bass, the Director of Career Development Marketing for Remax Crest and Masters. Joining us today, we have a longtime top producing agent um, with us. And I would like to welcome Mark Hammer. Mark, hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. Awesome. Why don't we start off with you telling us a little bit about yourself and your business? Okay, okay. well, I started um, in the business in 1995, went to BCIT, got into business, and I guess I was 20, yeah, I was 22 at the time. Didn't really know anything except um, just to pick up the phone and call people and ask people who do they know that is wanting to buy or sell real estate. So, nice. yeah, I was lucky enough in the first two weeks, I sold my first house. Amazing. That's a nice start. Yeah. That's okay. great. So you obviously know a thing or two about success after 25 plus years in this business now. Um, what do you have to do every day to be successful in this business? What's your take on that? Well, you got to pick up the phone and call people. So whether you're calling your your past clients, your sphere of influence, you know, people you know, um, businesses, um, people that you want to do business with, uh, just listed, just sold, just reaching out to people, making contacts. For years, I, I made 50 contacts a day. That's a lot of time on the phone. You know, that, it's good. if you've got a schedule, it's it's basically from nine in the morning till uh, 12 in the afternoon. Yeah. So kind of scheduling that first part of your day to make that the priority and making yeah. sure that you're making those contacts and, and reaching out. Um, you know, since we're on the topic of being on the phone, I wanted to kind of dive into a little bit more about the art of the phone call. So when someone's working to grow their business, you know, by connecting with people over the phone, what advice would you have for them? Aside from just doing that, doing the volume, I guess, that's probably the main thing. You um, you know, lots changed with um, the social media stuff. A lot of people are trying to use social media, including me, and it, it really hasn't done anything for me. Um, you know, I'm still getting all my business by the phone. Um, I, I, I would say now you're, before you'd be able to call people just listed, just sold because everybody was in the uh, directory. Um, everybody had landlines back in the day. So it was, it was easy to do. You'd call 50 people a day and, you know, maybe get an appointment. Now you're, you're calling your sphere of influence people, you know, mm -hmm. and um, adding value to a phone call and always be asking people, who do you know that is looking to buy or sell real estate in the next six to seven business days? Right. And are you, and so you're mostly kind of working on your database and calling them and basically letting them know what's going on in real estate and, and just adding value. Obviously you're not calling them and just saying, Hey, do you want to buy or sell? But you know, yeah. you're the reason for the call talk to me a little bit about that, because I think that's a big challenge that people face is what do I say when I call and I don't want to be bugging someone and I want to, you know, I, it's, it's, to me, it's all about adding value. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, when you when you sell someone a place, you know, the next day, call them, what can I do for you? And, you know, have it scheduled so that, you know, every couple of days you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get referrals. When, when someone buys a place, that's when you're going to get referrals or when someone sells a place. It's, it's fresh on their mind. So that's the best time to be communicating with people. Right. You know, another trick I do is I call people on their birthdays, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which, is, which is great. Um, and, you know, a lot of time you call someone on their birthday and they might say, well, hey, I've got a friend. You know, actually, I've got a friend that's looking to buy or sell real estate. That's great. Or maybe they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So do you do you try to like get through your whole network a certain number of times a year or do you have any kind of like best practices that you follow in that regard? Or uh, is there still today like maybe even like a certain number of calls that you have like as a benchmark that you're trying to reach every day? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to reach 20 calls a day, mm -hmm. 20 contacts a day. Um, and I'm, I'm doing that. Um, you know, right now I'm door knocking. Oh, so, there you go. Yeah. So if you can't get them on the phone, get them at their door. <laughs> there you go. That's great. <laughs> um, 
Uh, let's talk about real estate investing. What did, I know that you've worked with investors. You've also obviously invested in real estate mm -hmm. yourself. After all these years, you've seen the, what that does for people's wealth. Um, what advice would you have for someone that wants to grow their wealth through real estate investing? Well, the, you know, one of the reasons I got into real estate is so that I could um, buy real estate. And, and so I've got real estate from, you know, I bought early, I bought early and, you know, some of the stuff that I bought, I still have. So it's, it's great. Um, you know, it puts you in a position where you, where it just makes you wealthy. <laughs> That's the goal, right? <laughs> it's the, it's a, it's a great thing to be investing in, and uh, um, yeah, that's that's great. And you were do you, I know that you have your rental license, and so you're working. Uh, do you take on any rental listings, or do you are you dealing with um, uh, own you know landlords on their rentals at all? Just just my own rentals. Just your own rentals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but the reason I got my rental license is because we did do a rental company back in the day and it was, it was a big pain in the ass. So mm -hmm. we, I refer out now. Right. Right. And when it comes to investing, is there any area that you're kind of directing your clients or is there any, anything that you can kind of talk about that as to maybe where a good place to invest is right now or um, any, any strategies that you have in that regard? That's top secret. Top secret. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna work with you to find out that info. <laughs> there, there is some, there's some terrific ways to make a lot of money right now in real estate, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, there's more than one way to make money. So if you ask me what are what are the projects that I'm working on right now, I mean, I, I can't tell you. I'll tell you in, in five years from now. But um, anything you buy is is good. There's lots of areas where there's opportunity. Look for growth and densification. That's all I'm going to say. Right, right. Now, I have access to a awesome stat system where I can see how agents are performing in the industry. And I've, I've looked up your stats. And I'm not sure if you saw this in the questions that I emailed you, but you have some incredible production in terms of how fast you sell your listings and the fact that you actually get a lot more um, for your sellers in comparison to the average agent in the industry. I'm not sure if you knew that, um, but that kind of leads me into my next question here. What does it take to get more for your clients in the sale of their home? Um, oh, this sounds like a listing appointment. Well, we've got to <laughs> place it right. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a, a proven marketing plan, mm -hmm. a game plan, mm -hmm. and you got to follow through with it. Mm -hmm. And you got to have an offer presentation date. And then you got to orchestrate negotiation so you get the highest price for your, your client. Right. So, um, but pricing it right and, and being organized is, is probably how you're going to do it. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. And I see that's a big focus for you. I've you know, taken a look through you know, your social media and stuff, and I know that mm -hmm. that's uh, an important part of your strategy in working with sellers. So what are some of the things that you would address with a seller when they want to list their home you know, above your recommended price? Well, I don't carry a large inventory um, mm -hmm. because I don't, I'm only going to list something if I can sell it. And if it's going to be a good experience for myself and for my client. So, you know, if we can't meet on price, that's okay. Um, because I'm not going to be able to service everyone. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So you guys just have to, you know, come, come to that agreement. Otherwise it's not, you're not going to move forward with things. That's right. I know a lot of new agents probably are tempted to take on, higher price listings, maybe because they want to, you know, they, they just, they want to take that opportunity and see where it goes. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you have to say about that? What advice would you have for a new agent that's in that position? 99% um, it's not a win-win situation because when you've got an overpriced listing, sellers, you know, are going to blame, sellers always blame the realtor for their property not selling. They don't blame themselves. So you've got to you've got to establish the price, and their you, you got to get the seller's expectations, establish a price, and then ideally, 
go beyond their expectations. Right. So when you sell a property within the time frame that you, you're talking about and it's over um, the price that you gave them, they're going to be very happy and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get repeat business from them and you're going to get referrals from them. Right. So, right. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've seen some realtors where they, you know, the, or the, the client says, well, let's just, you know, let's just try it out for a bit or maybe the realtor would accept. Okay. Well, if they're, if they're really set on that price, let's just do it this way for, you know, 30 days and then almost like pre basically pre sign that price amendment after the 30 days. So that, yeah. you know, like that, is that something that you've ever done or no, no, <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> you're pretty well, no, sure. I, I, really, I'd rather, you know, ideally take on, you know, a listing a week and sell a listing a week mm -hmm. um, or take two listings a week and sell two listings a week. But uh, taking, having a, like for me personally, I just don't want to manage a large inventory. Yeah. And maybe for some agents, you know, taking on 20 listings or 30 listings and the market goes up and you sell all of them, that's great. But if the market doesn't go up as much as we think it's going to go and these listings sit around for a while, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be fun. Yeah, that's right. And what harm does that do to a seller to have a listing that kind of just sits there and and you know sits on the market at the price that they want for for you know the hopes that you know maybe someone would come in. That, that's well, a yeah. that's a really game to play, I think. Well, it all comes down to motivation. But I mean, if I'm a motivated seller, I'm going to price my home right. And or if I, I guess the harm it's going to do is if it's someone that really does need to move and price is too high, then it's going to affect their moving mm -hmm. time. Right. Of course. So, so from there, I yeah. mean, it could cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, of course. So I've noticed that you have been really committed to doing market updates. Like every week you're on video. And what I love about them is that they're really natural. You're out there like skiing on the ski. <laughs> you're giving <laughs> Um, and, and it's, it's really, you know, it's really fluid. You're just basically, you know, talking about what's going on, what your experience is. Hey, maybe there's multiple offers happening or this is what's going on. It's, it's really natural. So you do. So good job on that. I see you really, uh, taking a commitment to doing video this, uh, this past year. Um, when we talk about numbers and for, you know, agents that are wanting to get committed to doing market update video, you know, some of them feel like that's a, you know, can be a little bit daunting, but it's so important to be sharing your expertise and sharing your knowledge of the market. I don't think there's anything, you know, more important than that when it comes to marketing. Um, when it comes to stats, what kind of numbers should you be looking at on a regular basis to keep a pulse, keep, to keep a pulse on the market? Well, the most important, numbers to look at is look at the active listings in a specific area and then look at the sales in a one in the in in the last month and then divide that by the number of listings and that's going to give you the supply mm -hmm. and and so let's just say there's there's 10 active listings in an area and there's been five sales well that's a two-month supply that's a very hot market mm. And so those are the numbers. Those are those are the true numbers you need to know. Right. It's, um, yeah. But it's what other like, numbers would you say that are important? Well, I mean, I think sales sales through ratio. There's a sales yeah. ratio. I think is important mm -hmm. when you're looking at that, and that you know obviously indicates whether you're, you know a buyer's market, a neutral market, or seller's market. And you know we know that every specific neighborhood is going to have um, a different experience in that. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, we advise our agents, you know, to do and to really address and to dive, yeah. to dive in on as well. And then, and like you said, so the difference, I guess, between days on market and what you were saying there with the, with the inventory, um, can you, can you speak a little bit to the difference there and what would be like a, you said a two month inventory was a, it was a really hot market, but what, what's the threshold on that? Well, like I'll give you an example. I did an evaluation on some condos in December downtown mm -hmm. and I think I said oh gosh I gotta there was something like 1100 and something listings on the market downtown and there was like a hundred sales in one month 
And then that's like, a, that's a crazy buyer's market. That's a huge inventory and, and not that many sales. Right. And so I think if you were to look at those numbers now, it's changing quite a bit. It's going to, it's, it's becoming more and more a seller's market. So when I, when I go into, a, especially for condos, if I go into an evaluation for, for a condo, I want to know how things are moving. And so I look at the sales versus what's out there. And, right. and yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at, if I see a, a property and it's been on the market for more than 30 days, then I'm thinking there's, there's something wrong. Like, because literally my listings, ideally I like my listings to sell within the first two weeks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's that. And I think that's the thought of a, of a lot of people. And it kind of goes back to my previous question on, you know, kind of like the risks of overpricing a property is, that exactly that people think what's what's wrong with this when most of the homes are selling you know a lot you know at that rate more quickly um yeah. and this one's not what's what's going on the seller's not that motivated that sort of a thing so yeah, yeah. um so kind of going you mentioned you're not getting much out of your social media but i <laughs> but i i did have a good look at uh, what you're doing on facebook and what you're doing on in instagram and I was actually really impressed. I know there wasn't a ton of engagement on there, but I was really impressed with the consistency and the content as well. I really thought it highlighted your knowledge really well or highlights your knowledge really well and your expertise really nicely. Um, and what I also like about it is that it's super professional, but it sounds like it could have all been, you know, written by you. It sounds really personable. And um so can you tell me a bit about what goes into that on your end? And, you know, if you have someone helping you with it, what that looks like. So, yeah, with regards to social media, I've, I, I have I I have someone looking after it. Um, so it's I can't take credit for the social media. Um, and she pushes me to she basically tells me what I need to do. Right. Um, and it's. This might sound weird, but I've never seen an Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, newsflash, you have an Instagram account. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I put videos on it, but I don't put the videos on, right? And, and yeah, it's like the same thing, right? So, yeah. I mean, I've got someone managing that for me. Um, and so, I, yeah. 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 So she's coming to you and saying, hey, Mark, um, you know, I want to do something like this because you've got like a mix of uh, like personal stuff to you, like with your family, yeah. dogs and like lifestyle things, yeah. which I think is important. You're selling a lifestyle here in Greater Vancouver. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, and then obviously you've kind of made a commitment to to do a weekly video as well. Yeah, I'm supposed to do Mondays and Fridays. Oh, OK. OK. So sometimes I forget. <laughs> So that's that's a big commitment. That's a lot of video work. So how is that getting into video? Because I see you just started at the beginning of last year, it looks like. It's easy. You just get your iPhone and you put it in front of you and uh, start talking. Yeah. Yeah. When you're when you're knowledgeable and you know what you're talking about, it's yeah. It, yeah. Usually it takes a couple takes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's fun because you do get people, you do get engagement because I do have people saying, Hey, my dad watches your video every week. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, that's just, you're reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah. So that's why I'm doing it because I need to reach out to more people since there's less numbers on landlines now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to get in front of people and to stay top of mind and, and mm -hmm. just also like show your, your humanness and, you know, yeah. just, just who you are as a person. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's great. Um, so you have been doing, um, I don't have this question, I hope you don't mind me asking, but you've been doing you know, some training of, of new realtors. Can you t tell me a little bit about what your kind of like training methodology looks like and what you're doing um, in, in that? Well, it's, it's all about prospecting um, and, and schedule. So, and then also scripts. So, you know, first thing in the morning, you go over your scripts, you role play your scripts, mm -hmm. um, have a have accountability partners, have a book club that you belong to mm -hmm. and have role play partners. Mm -hmm. So after 26 years in the business, well, it's OK, it'll be 26 years in June. Um, I still role play with um, two other agents. I role play with a top agent in um, Arizona and another guy in um, Seattle. Hmm. 
Hmm. And I, you know, I role play with them half an hour um, once a week. And then I have a book club that I belong to with a bunch of realtors um, sort of scattered all over North, um, you know, North America. Yeah. Um, so, and it's just taking people and, and getting them on the phone, mm -hmm. giving them scripts, getting them familiar with the scripts and getting them calling. And so I'm looking for, I'm looking for realtors that uh, maybe have six months to a year in the business. I don't mind it, you know, anybody newer because we can take that person and make them a top producer in a very short amount of time. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've got a methodology that works. And I know that yeah. you know, on your site that you mentioned, you've uh, subscribed to the Mike Ferry um, system for training. So is that kind of still the kind of like process that you're using is his, is his system in this? So, yeah, I was with my, I was involved with Mike Ferry since 2008. And mm -hmm. it was just recently that I've gotten out of the program. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say I'll go back into it. Um, I just needed to have a, to step back to see what what direction I'm going to be going. Yeah. Sure. So, but yeah. yeah, that was a long time, and and I mean, I did, I did some, I've had some great training by uh, by Mike Ferry, and so uh, I'm I'm very grateful for that. That's great. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, scripting and role playing, I know that's something that, you know, our coach Janet um, brings up that realtors should be doing, you know, even if it's just for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes every day, it really hones in your skills. And I think, I mean, I still, I still do that. Like I've been doing this now for 10 years and I still go over that sort of stuff and, you know, relook at it and, and, you know, spend time prepping and planning, even though I've been doing, you know, for example, my, you know, career night event for, years and years and years now but um yeah planning and preparation and just kind of like dialing in and getting in that right mindset mm -hmm. visualizing what you want to accomplish in you know in each instance it goes a long way and yeah, yeah it, and it doesn't doesn't take a lot so um yeah that's great can you can you tell me a little bit more so you mentioned you're looking for like a you know uh, someone who's maybe been in the business for you know six months or a year to kind of join your to join your team um you know what are like what are also some of the qualities that you're looking for in somebody obviously someone that hustles and someone that's going to be comfortable getting on the phone and all of that what else can you say about that you know it's there's all types of different personality types out there and everyone can be successful it really takes the person that's going to be committed to making the contacts every day and having a schedule that they're going to set aside and the, and the biggest thing that gets in the way of success for young realtors is an ego mm -hmm. and so drop leave the ego at home and come into the office and make your calls that's it it's it's simple but i think like you said when we spoke before it's simple but not everyone does it and that's why you know and it's not necessarily easy yet to be getting mm -hmm. up every day and doing that when you don't necessarily feel like it um it, to to dive into a little bit more about that schedule um you know time management i think is one of the most important things in this business because all of a sudden you know let's say for a new person coming in you've got let's say 40, 50 hours or whatever you want to work in a week. And maybe you've worked for somebody else before you've been an employee, but all of a sudden your time's your own now. And yeah. it's like, I, you know, I hosted a career night event last night and um, most of the attendees were like, you know what, I want to get into this. I'm really looking forward to having something that has a more flexible schedule and all of that. <laughs> and, I, and I always say, it's like, that's <clears throat> true. That's true. But it's, uh, you know, um, it's also a, a double-edged sword, and like your the, fl the flexibility in your schedule can be a killer. And you have to you have to kind of hold a line and have and create a schedule that serves you and serves your business. Um, and and so, what does that what does that schedule like look like for you? Or what would that schedule look like? Would you say you would suggest for a new agent um, getting going in the business? Well. I would say if you want to be serious, start your day at seven in the morning and mm -hmm. the role play. And then by eight o'clock, getting your, getting your leads organized and by eight 30, 
well, first of all, eight o'clock, call your leads by eight 30, do start your prospecting. So, and, and call until 12 o'clock, mm. then have a lunch at 12 o'clock for about a half an hour and have lunch with someone, you know, like a client or mm-hmm. someone that you want to do business with or someone your sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, come back to the office at one o'clock, return your calls, um, do, do any admin at that time, go on your appointments from three to five. And if yeah. you don't have appointments from three to five, make more calls. Right. Yeah. yeah. Until you build, until you build up that pipeline. So can you imagine, like, I mean, it's easy for me to say that. Um, it's easy for anybody to say it, but to actually do it, I've seen guys and I don't want to mention names, but there's a lot of friends of mine who are very, very successful, way more successful than I am. And they follow that schedule and they're making millions in commissions a year, you know, and, and it's, it's just the key to success is that schedule and making the contacts. Yeah, that's right. That's that. That's great. I mean, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Mark, for sharing that insight. I think it's uh, <clears throat> some in some sense is simple, but it's so important just to yeah follow that yeah. Uh, follow that <clears throat> those rules for success and be consistent. And that that's what uh, that's what leads to success and a long career like you've had. So, uh, <laughs> so don't do that. You make me feel old when you say a long career. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of there's a lot of wisdom that comes with that. A lot of good things that come with that too. So, um, you know, that's great. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, for those of yeah. you that are watching, um, next week we have a um, bit of a different topic. We have uh, Dan McCarthy joining us, who is the managing broker for our uh, Remax Crest office in Burnaby, right next to Metrotown. And Dan has been a specialist in commercial real estate for the last, I guess, twenty plus years. So he's going to be sharing his insights on the basics when it comes to commercial real estate and really break it down and what that looks like and what um, what it takes to have a successful career in commercial real estate. So if you're interested in that, um, join us uh, next Thursday at 11 a.m. Mark, thank you so much. Thanks, Cassidy. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye now. Bye.